Hey, hey friends, it's Cory from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and today is a great day. And that is because I have been waiting months to get a clogged Epson EcoTank printer. Now, I know you're probably thinking, don't you not want clogs? Of course I don't want clogs, but I have been wanting to make a video about how to clear clogs from an Epson EcoTank printer for months maybe even years at this point, and I've never been able to get it to clog. But guess what? I went to print this morning and my printer is clogged. I have no magenta ink. So now I can finally make this video and I'm really excited to share with you how to clear clogs from an Epson EcoTank. This is my second video in my Sublimation Fix It series. So last week we went through a bunch of things that would help you troubleshoot both your sublimation printing as well as your transfers. And in this post, we're dealing with clogs. This video is specifically for how to unclog an Epson EcoTank printer that you have converted to sublimation. Because sublimation ink has a different uh, formulation than regular printer ink, the print heads in this printer aren't actually designed for sublimation ink and they can clog really easily. So I see a lot of people struggling with clogs in their Epson EcoTank printers. If you have another type of printer, however, you may also get clogs. So even though this video is geared toward the Epson EcoTank printers, you can use the tips and tricks in this video to clear clogs from other types of printers. To start this video, I want to first talk about how you know you have a clog. The first thing I want you to check is to make sure you have enough ink in your printer. Maybe your printer isn't printing a certain color because you are actually out of ink. Luckily, the Epson EcoTank makes this really easy because it has those little viewing windows so you can see how much ink you have in each tank. Once you've confirmed you have enough ink in the tanks, there are two things you might see that would represent a clog. The first is if you are seeing a bunch of white lines within your print. I don't have an example of that, but if you are seeing basically white lines within your print, that could mean that there is a small clog within your print head. The second is if you are not seeing a color entirely. So Epson EcoTank printers have four colors of ink, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And if you're not seeing one or more of those colors on your prints, then you probably have a clog. So for example, this is how my printer test sheet should look when it is printing all four colors. You can see that everything looks like it should. I have an entire color wheel and I have all four of my ink colors printing well. But when I went to print this today, you can see that I am clearly missing my magenta ink. I have the cyan, the yellow, and the black, but absolutely nowhere on this sheet is that magenta. This clearly tells me that somewhere in the lines I have a clog in my magenta. And in this video, we're gonna fix that. Note that at any point during this process, you might clear your clog and you won't have to do the other steps. So if your magenta or whatever color starts printing really well, then you can go ahead and skip any steps that are after the step where you cleared your clog. To start, I'm going to print a nozzle check. A nozzle check is a great place to start if you have any clogs or issues because it will show you exactly what's going on inside the printer. You can access this from the front of the printer. To print a nozzle check, you'll just go to the screen and you can use the buttons over here to go to maintenance and click OK. Then right there, there's a nozzle check. So you can just press OK to proceed. So here I can confirm my magenta is not working. I have my black over here on the left, and then I have yellow, I have a space where the magenta should be, and I have my cyan. Now that I know my other two colors are working, we can really just troubleshoot that magenta. Now there are two choices you can make to start working through that magenta clog. You can either run a print head cleaning or you can print out some printer purge sheets. I do have a printer purge sheet bundle available for you for free with this video. You can get that by going to my craft library. To get to my craft library, go to heyletsmakestuff.com slash library, and there you can request the password. Once you have the password, you can go ahead and go back to that same page and log in. The printer purge pages, as well as that test sheet I showed you earlier in this video, are found under S25, so in the sublimation section, S25. To find this, you can use one of two methods. You can scroll down a bit and click on sublimation. This will drop you down to a lower part of the page where you should be able to find S25 in that sublimation section. The other is to use the find feature on your computer. If you're on a Mac, you can use command F. If you are on a PC, you can use control F and you can search for S25. Once you find the file, the first link is the download link and that will download a zip with the PDFs inside of it so that you can use them to test your printer. So like I said, you have two choices. You can use those printer purge sheets first or you can do a print head clean. I like to use the printer purge sheets as opposed to that print head cleaning at the start, just because if you are using that print head cleaning, it is moving extra ink into the waste tank. 
You can replace the waste tank, but it's just another expense and another thing that you may have to go out and find. But if you're printing the purge sheets, that ink is actually being pushed through the lines onto the sheet itself. So let's go ahead and print that magenta printer purge sheet, and we'll see if it gets us anywhere with this printer. Often printing that much magenta will get that ink flowing again. However, it didn't work for me this time, which means that we're gonna move on to doing that print head cleaning. Just like the nozzle check, it's really easy to do from the front of the printer. Again, you're going to go to maintenance. You're gonna click okay. And instead of doing the nozzle check, we're gonna push the arrow to choose the head cleaning. Then I'm going to click OK to proceed. All right, after it did this cleaning, it gave me another nozzle check, and you can see things are both getting worse and getting better. I'm not really sure what happened to the black up here, but I'm hoping that when we print next time, this will not be an issue. You can also see that that black slightly contaminated my yellow up here, so I'm really hoping that that's not going to be an issue. That being said, I do have two small bits of magenta, whereas in my last nozzle check, I didn't have any. So now we can take the next step. Because I am getting just a little bit of magenta ink through that print head, I'm going to try printing a couple more of those magenta purge sheets to see if they help. All right, once again, I really don't have much on here. It's very hard to see, but I do see it trying here at the top. I'm also still having issues with the black at the top, which I'm really disappointed about, um, but hopefully we will be able to fix that as well. During the print head clean, the printer is actually trying to push some ink through those print heads to clear any clogs. Instead of that ink being put on the paper, like I said, it goes into that waste tank. If you do find that your waste tank is full, you can buy a replacement on Amazon, and there are YouTube videos for replacing it. At this point, you have some options. You can print more printer page sheets, especially if you are seeing a little bit of your color coming through. You can also perform two more printer head cleanings and then allow your printer to sit for at least two hours. And that's because there could be some air in the lines and it needs time for that ink to fill the lines. But if you've done all of that and you just can't clear your clog, it's time to do a power cleaning. And if you've been around the sublimation world for any length of time, you'll know that people are very afraid of the power cleaning. They say it can shorten the lifespan of your printer. And maybe that's true for all the components and everything, but I think it's mostly true for that waste tank. And like I said before, you can change out that waste tank, so don't be super afraid of the power clean. It does use quite a bit of ink, but if your printer's clogged anyway, you're not using it, you might as well get that clog cleared. So we're gonna do a power cleaning. We are back in the maintenance panel here. We did that head cleaning last time. I'm gonna click the arrow to get us to our power cleaning. I'm gonna click OK. Then you're gonna get some warnings basically telling you to do more head cleanings and to make sure that you have ink in the tanks. So I'm just gonna kind of page through those. Just read them all if you'd like, and then you can hit OK to proceed. After you go through all of their warnings, you're going to press this button for five seconds to start that power cleaning. Once you have that power cleaning done, Epson wants you to wait 12 hours before even printing a nozzle check to see if that ink clog is cleared. Generally, I highly recommend you wait. However, for this video, I decided to see printing right away if it would work, and for me, it did. It may not for you, but I was really glad to see that I have been able to clear that magenta clog. This is the first one I printed right after I did that big cleaning, and you'll notice I still have a lot of black ink here up on the top. That just means that there's some black ink on the rollers or some other internal part of the printer and I was really disappointed because I don't want these black smears over all of my prints. So I decided to print a second sheet. My second sheet worked better right away. It did still have a little bit of ink here, so I decided to print it a third time. My third print, absolutely perfect. This is exactly what you want your sublimation print test sheet to look like. It has all the colors and I don't have any of that ink smearing. And those are the basic steps to get you from here to here. Now, you may need to repeat some of those steps to really clear a difficult clog. So you can do some more head cleanings, you can do some more printer purge pages. If you are out of luck, you can try doing that power clean again, because honestly, I think a power clean is better than having a printer that's just sitting there as a brick because it won't work. But overall, these steps should help you clear any clog you have in your sublimation printer. So what happens if you go through this whole process a few times and you still can't clear your clog. Well, next week I'm going to get messy and I'm going to try and swap the ink in this printer. I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to push the ink through the lines to completely drain this printer. Is it going to work? I hope so. Is it going to be messy? Definitely. Do I want to do it? Not really, but I have had so many people ask me how to swap ink in an Epson EcoTank, so we're going to give it a shot.
Stay tuned next week. I hope you join me for that, um, especially if you really can't get those clogs cleared. I really hope you liked this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to go and download the printer purge sheets for free along with that printer test page. If you have any questions, of course, leave those in the comments and I'll be happy to help. I always appreciate if you give this video a like, follow my channel for more Sublimation, Cricut, and laser content. I'll see you next week.